a very good morning to all the students of class 11th political science and students as we were doing the third chapter that is equality from your book political theory we had finished seven parts and in yesterday's lecture we had discussed about feminism what is the concept and the doctrine political doctrine of uh, feminism and who are the people whom we call as feminist and what is the relevance of feminism okay and today we are going to do the eighth part of this chapter that is equality and today's topic is we are going to discuss about masochism or and uh, liberalism or socialism or i will also tell you about what do we mean by communalism so we'll try to understand all these political ideologies and how they are related and why we are studying these ideologies under equality because they are very important when we talk of equality because these political uh, ideologies only have different sorts of equalities and different type of uh, pattern when we talk about equality under various political ideologies so it is important for us to understand what do we mean by masochism or socialism or liberalism or capitalism okay so these are some of the important political ideologies which we have been seeing in our society from the 19th century so we shall be covering that today so let's start as from the name you can see marxism marxism this was the ideology political ideology given by a famous person that is karl marx so uh, this marxism and liberalism are two important political ideologies of our times marx was an important 19th century thinker so karl marx was one of the most important 19th century uh, thinker who argued that the root cause of entrenched inequality was private ownership he said that whatever a deep and uh, huge inequalities we see in our society and these inequalities are just because of the private ownership of important economic resources that the economic resources which are very important for the growth and development of every person every society those economic resources are under the control of few private owners such as oil land forest or properties these are some of the important economic uh, sectors from where there is a growth of economy but these economic resources are under some private ownership and this is the only reason because there are some private owners so there is a lot of uh, inequalities in the society so this was the idea given by karl marx he said he pointed out that such private ownership did not only make the class of owners wealthy it also gave them political power so he says that uh, that this uh, when we give some private ownership to some individuals relating to oil land etc forest and uh, did not only make the class owners wealthy of course when few will have the ownership and power in their hand of such a important resources for the uh, growth and development they will become very wealthy they have they will have lot of wealth but this wealth will also consider them and conclude them to be uh, one of the most important political powers in the society so it means when there is private ownership it leads to uh, some wealthy class and when there is a wealthy class it means all the powers enables them to influence state policies so they are so wealthy they they are political they become politically very uh, influential or they are very significant in the politics so they have uh, they can influence the state policies and laws this could prove a threat to democratic government so when there are certain ownership or certain class which is wealthy and they also have all the political powers so they are easily able to influence and convert various state policies and laws according to their comfort so this is this can be a threat to any democratic government so marxist and socialists feel that economic inequalities provide support to other forms of social inequalities so it is only in this system where there is capitalist system there is private ownership so these karl marx under his theory he says that if there will be economic inequalities it will provide support to the other form of social inequality so this economic inequalities will lead to different social inequalities in the society such as differences of rank or privileges so it is the uh, root cause of this uh, these social inequalities is economic inequalities and this inequality is because of the private ownership and the wealth on the in the hands of few owners so here therefore to tackle inequalities in society we need to go beyond providing equal opportunities so if we have to tackle these uh, inequalities in the society we will have to go beyond uh, just providing the equal opportunities and try and influence pro uh, public control over essential resources 
and form a property. Such views may be debatable, but they have raised important issues which need to be addressed. So they are discussing about that how private ownership leads to inequality of economic inequality, and these economic inequalities lead to various social inequalities. And uh, moving forward an opposing point of view can be found in liberal theory so in oppose if we see in contrast the other political theory is the liberal or the we can say the capitalist system the liberal system it's uh, completely opposite to what we read under marx or uh, marx theory or the socialism here liberals upload the principle of competition here these liberals or the capitalist system they had follow the principle of competition they think that competition is very important in a society to have the positive growth to have a quality growth as a most efficient and the fair way of distributing so they say this principle of competition is the most efficient and the most fair way of distributing of resources and rewards in the society if you have to distribute the resources and rewards it should be based on the principle of competition that is why we see in the capitalist system there is private ownership private marketing property ownership private ownership so this leads to like uh, uh, leads to distribution of resources and rewards in the so society on the basis of their capabilities, capacities and interest. They believe, these people believe, they believe that while states may have to intervene to try and ensure a minimum standard of living and equal opportunities. But here liberal and the socialism will see that although they support the privatization and the capitalist system, but they also support that there should be some interference of the government it's written they believe that while state that is the center governments may have to intervene to try and ensure a minimum standard of living have to maintain the minimum standard of living for each and every citizen in the country equal opportunities should be given to everyone this cannot by itself bring equality and justice to society here competition between people is free and fair conditions so there always in when there is a capitalist system or there will be a liberal system competition will be there among people but there will be that competition will be free and fair where everyone will get the equal opportunity to show their talents and skills is most just efficient way of distributing rewards in society for them as long as competition is open and free inequalities are unlikely to become entrenched and people will get due reward of their talents and efforts how much efforts and talent we have skills we have accordingly we will get the amount of resources so it will depend on our capacity and our capabilities what how hard working we are how talented we are so it is a competitive market although state has a role in the field of education and health for maintaining the basic standard of living but when we talk about the economy or society or the marketing, we will see this sort of system, competition. For liberals, the principle of competition is most just and efficient way of selecting candidates for jobs. So according in liberal system, this uh, liberal uh, ideology, principle of competition in uh, uh, under this principle of competition we select candidates for jobs and admission to educational institutions so you must have seen if you want to apply to some particular institution for particular professional jobs or professional courses uh, so you have to give some entrance exam or some sort of system is there on the basis of that eligibility you are being selected or you are being rejected so that we call it principle of competition for instance in our country many students hope for admission to professional courses and entry is highly competitive but if you want some uh, admission in good colleges as a professional degree so you'll have to give some highly competitive exams from time to time the government and the courts have stepped in to regulate education institutions and entrance test to ensure that everybody so there has been various guidelines uh, again again revised for various entrance exams so that it to ensure that everyone gets the fair and equal chance so it is the responsibility of the government that everyone gets the free and fair and equal chance to participate to show their skills and talents and competing the exam although it is not guaranteed that if you are participating if you are working hard you will get the success but you will get the equal opportunities some may still not get admission but it is considered to be if you do not get admission you cannot so that you are facing inequality in the society under liberal system it means you are giving you are given the equal and free chances uh, opportunities but you could not qualify okay so this is all about marxism and liberalism these are the two political ideologies which we follow in our society with this i come to end of this particular topic 
and in the next part we'll move forward in this chapter thank you